I've been tearing up dirt roads for as long as I can remember. Weekends as a kid were spent racing three-wheelers and later my dad's Volkswagen dune buggy across iconic California desert spots like Glamis, Johnson Valley, and Ocotillo Wells. As I got older, I leveled up to racing air-cooled Volkswagens in events like the Baja 1000 and rallying stock cars and navigational challenges like the Rebel Rally. Most recently, I built, raced, and even podiumed with a lifted Miata. I know how to handle a car in the dirt and keep it in check. So, when Lamborghini handed me the keys to the Huracan Sterato, but insisted I stick to the pavement, I wasn't exactly thrilled. While I can't give you a first-hand account of how this off-road-ready supercar performs when the terrain gets rough, I'll walk you through how it handles on the street and speculate on its off-road chops. I'll also dive into some of the key technical details along the way. Huracan Sterato, composed on the road. The Sterato debuted last year as Lamborghini's off-road-themed farewell to the Huracan, and all 1,499 units are already sold out. While I couldn't take it off-road, I've been using it as my daily driver in my small desert town, and it turns heads everywhere I go. While the Huracan's sharp, angular design has never really been my thing, it always reminded me of a flattened polygon. The matte green finish, black cladding, and roof rack give it a rugged charm that I appreciate. Whether I'm stopped at a red light or grabbing a bite at Chipotle, the car attracts a lot of attention. Some people are enthusiastic and come up to ask questions about it, while others shoot me dirty looks as they pass by, their go back to LA stickers proudly displayed. For the record, I'm a local, but hey, to each their own. For a week, I go about my usual errands, and I'm pleasantly surprised by the seats. They're not rock hard, nor are they so tight that my hips feel cramped. The Sterato sits nearly 2 inches higher than a standard Huracan, with 6.4 inches of ground clearance. This extra height makes getting in and out a lot easier. Even my 81-year-old mom had no trouble hopping in when I took her for a ride. I did scrape the front a couple of times on some steeper driveways, but for the most part, it wasn't an issue. There's about 4 cubic feet of storage in the front trunk, which is just enough for a couple of bags of groceries. If I needed to, I could have strapped down larger items on the roof rack. One major downside is the rear visibility. It's awful. If ever a car needed a rear camera mirror, it's the Sterato. The standard rear view mirror only shows the engine bay louvers, which look great from the outside, but don't help much with seeing what's behind you. You'll be relying on your side mirrors a lot. My favorite feature inside is definitely the steering wheel. It's perfectly sized for my hands, wrapped in suede for extra grip, and the flat bottom gives my knees some extra room. I thought I'd hate having the turn signal switch on the steering wheel, but it actually lets me keep a better hold of the wheel while signaling. I kind of wish my own car had this. As for the infotainment system, it's a bit of a letdown. It's pretty laggy, and Apple CarPlay kept cutting out on me. I couldn't find an efficiency calculator in the menus, so I never knew exactly what my mileage was, though the EPA rates the Sterato at 15 miles per gallon combined, which seems accurate. One neat feature, though, is the ability to display my latitude, longitude, and heading, which is a fun touch for a map geek like me. Around town driving is pretty easy in strata mode, which keeps the 5.2 liter V10 in check. The seven speed dual clutch automatic transmission shifts quickly and isn't harsh. In this mode, it's easy to just cruise around town stress-free. However, the roof rack creates plenty of wind noise, especially at highway speeds. Between that, the road noise from the Bridgestone Dueler A-T tires and the Stonkin V10, I can barely hear my podcast while toddling down the freeway. But this is a Lamborghini, and I want the feel of all 602 ponies and 413 LEFD of torque. I have plenty of flat, straight, paved, unfortunately, roads nearby. I do a recon run to make sure the road is in good condition, turn around and switch to sport mode. I launch it, pedal to the metal, and it's kind of meh. It takes a beat for the power to kick it off the line. However, after a thunk in a second gear, the Sterato comes into its own, and my heart starts racing, well a little bit. Maybe I've been in too many pure electric vehicles lately with their instant torque, but this car 0 to 62 miles per hour time of 3.4 seconds feels almost slow now. Elucid would spank this thing off the line. Not to worry, the Huracan successor, the Temerario, will be electrified with a Lamborghini claim 0 to 62 miles per hour time of 2.7 seconds and more than 900 horsepower, Yowza. 
Still, I take the Storato up to triple digit speeds and the car feels confident and planted with no squirrely reactions at the rear wheels when I hit the brakes. In the twisties, I can feel less grip from the A-slash-T tires on the pavement than I'd expect in any other Huracan, but the Sterato still holds a mountain road at 70 to 80 miles per hour without a problem. Huracan Sterato, the off-road bits. The Huracan Sterato is well-behaved on-road, but it's built with a bunch of off-road parts. The Bridgestone all-terrain tires are size 235-40-R19 in the front and 285-40-R19 in the rear, and the tread appears to be a good compromise for on- and off-road driving. A smaller wheel would allow more sidewall, but the Sterato has some honking big brakes. A 19-inch wheel is as small as you can go. You do not get a spare tire with the Sterato, which is not good because tire failure is the number one problem folks encounter when they venture off the pavement. The Bridgestones are run flats, so in theory you can drive 50 miles at 50 miles per hour with puncture in the sidewall or tread. Those who have spent any time off-road, however, know that a gash in the sidewall is more common than a puncture. My recommendation is to strap a full-size spare to your roof rack. That's what it's there for. Don't go thinking you're going to conquer the Rubicon Trail in this thing. It might be lifted to 6.4 inches of ground clearance but that's less than the typical crossover SUV. The geometry is still terrible with approach, breakover, and departure angles of 10.4, 14.7, 26.5 degrees, respectively. To be fair, that departure angle is actually pretty good, besting the Ford Ranger Raptor by 0.1 degree. Still, you'll scrape pretty much everything else trying to climb overall, but the smallest obstacles. And while there is some protection under the car, it's not what I would call beefy. I take the car to my local oil change place, so I can get a good look underneath it. Lamborghini adds metal protection on the front and mid sections of the car, but it's only about 1 8 inch thick. Hard plastic is used in some places, and what covers the engine is the most flimsy of all. Nothing covers the exhaust system. As far as the suspension goes, it's not like the Sterato's magnetic dampers have long travel, nor do the control arms look any longer. Lamborghini wouldn't confirm it, but I can't imagine that the Sterato has any more will travel than the road-going Huracan. Between the geometry and the travel, this car is meant for flat rally roads with a bit of a washboard surface. I wouldn't put it through the whoops at speed, 